So in this video, we're going to get the bodometer running on its own without the app to start off with. Then we're going to look at how to position the bodometer on your riser or your bow. And then finally, we're going to install the app and connect it to the bodometer to see what's in the app. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at archeryblog.co.uk, Facebook at archeryblog, and finally Twitter at archeryblog.uk. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos get released. If you don't have a phone, smartphone, you don't want to use the app, you don't have to. You get some more features from using the app, but you don't have to. But the first thing you want to do is, after you've undone it, is give it a good charge up. Now you get the USB cable with it, so you just want to insert the smaller end into there and then plug the large USB end, either use a phone charger or plug it into a laptop or a desktop PC port and that will charge up for you. Okay, now there's many uh, status colors on the LED. So if your bodometer is pulsing green, the battery's charging, which is brilliant. If it's solid green, it means it's fully charged. And if it's blinking yellow, it's a low battery. And the other ones are really for Bluetooth connectivity. So if it's pulsing blue, it's going to pair. And if it's solid white, then it is connected. And if it's blinking purple, then the bodometer is doing a software update. But once you've charged it up, all you're going to have to do is attach it to your bow and start using it if you don't want to use the app. Now, the buttons should be on the right-hand side of the bodometer. Uh, in order to use them. Don't have it the way I had it, which was this way around, but you'll soon figure that out because the writing will be upside down on the screen. So first of all, all we do is to turn it on is we just hold the top button down for two seconds and it should light up. Okay, there we go. And now there's a menu and there are five items on there. Okay, now you move across those items by pressing the top button. So our first one is session, total count of arrows, Bow setup, app setup, and power off. Let's just go back through those. Now, app setup you can do if you're going to use the app. Once you've set up the bodometer to the app, that menu option will disappear, okay? But it'll always stay there if you're not using the app, okay? The end button here, power off. If you want to power it off, which you should do after you've finished using it, then go to the power off menu, press the bottom button, and then you can see a ticker and X. If you want to power it off, press the tick button on the bottom button. If you don't want to power it off, press the X button on the top. So we haven't powered it off. We're just going to run along the menu. Now, if we go to the session menu and click into it, we can see how many arrows we've shot on the left and our XI number on the right hand side. If we go along to our total count of arrows and press the bottom button, it will show our total count of arrows as you'd expect. And now bow setup, you need to do this bow setup first. And what it means is putting it onto your bow and shooting three normal arrows. Okay, they don't have to be perfect arrows, but they have to be uh, shot in the way that you would normally shoot. And once you've done those three arrows, the bow is then set up. You don't need to then do the bow setup again unless you've changed something on your bow, such as, I don't know, draw weight, an accessory change, anything change, then you need to do that bow setup again, okay? But once you've done the bow setup, then you should be able to just go straight into shooting your arrows and getting your scores out. Uh, your XI number, that is, and your total counts. Okay, now also if you move the bodometer, if you decide that you want to position it somewhere else on the bow, then you need to do the bow setup again as well. So that's how to use it on its own. Obviously you can use it on its own because it's got a nice screen on it with some buttons that you can see. Now let's have a look to see where you might position the mount on your riser. So when it comes to connecting the mount onto the bow, 
when it comes you've got the mount and you've got two velcro straps here to connect it to the bow now the best thing to do is to put it on a flat surface it says so your kind of options are kind of going somewhere here on the side of this uh, riser which is a Hoyt Horizon uh, Grand Prix ILF riser so you could put it there and then get to your uh, odometer or I think the better location to be honest though is probably on the back side here so that then when you shoot you can see the reading coming off it now you could do that at the bottom or obviously at the top as well there's not many more many other options on this uh, riser because it's quite limited on the holes the rear of the uh, limb bolts area has not been threaded so you couldn't screw it into there with a bolt um, the only other option you've got, if you're a bare bow archer and you don't use the front weight space here, you could use the long rod hole here if you wanted it on the front, but I do use it so I couldn't use that. Another option I did think about was the other hole next to the actual uh, button. But the problem is with this button, it sticks out a little bit too far and it doesn't quite line up. So as you see, you could have an option where you could put the mount somewhere kind of, it just doesn't quite line up, but you could have had the mount somewhere like that, which would have been good. Whereas if we look at a Hoyt formula riser, this is the uh, Factor, we've got a lot more options. So it's going to be dependent on what sort of riser you've got, uh, where it depends on where you're going to put the mount. So again, we've got the long rod um, hole on the front here, where we could put it here. But on these formula limbs, we've also got a hole here at the front. So we could actually attach the mount to the front here, on the front of the limb, either top or bottom. Probably not a great idea to put it on a limb, something that might be moving and flexing though. And obviously these days with these curvy risers, it's really difficult because you've got a lot of open space on them as well and lots of curves but if we put it upside down then we have got a lot more options because on the back of the bolts here they actually threaded these so what you could actually do is get your mount with a bolt and actually have your bodometer on the back which is quite nice because you can see it if you look down or if you look up and have it on the top spot. Another option might be for you right behind the handle here if you're not using this location. That you could put the mount right there as well. A bit of a stranger one underneath your hand, but you know it's an option. One thing to think of though is the mount is um, different on both sides. So one side's got two small protruding pieces and a little indent there. Whereas the other side has two, got, got two long pieces. So you want to make sure wherever you put it that that is at the front where you can get to it. Because once you clip on the bodometer, it's quite difficult to get it off. So if you're going to change, if you're going to position your this mount on the, on your bow and not take it off ever again, maybe with some 3M sticky tape or something like that, you're going to have to get something in there, probably a flat screwdriver, to actually sort of prise off uh, the bowdometer off if you want to move it between bows or something like that. Obviously, the easiest way would be to put the bowdometer onto these straps and then just take the whole straps off um, and move it between the bow that way. So once you've then got the strap on your bow and then you've got that area front you'll then just snap on the bow this into place remember to make sure that you the words are going to be the buttons need to be on the right hand side so all you do then is you literally just snap it into place he says
There we go. And it just snaps into place. But then you need to get something in there just to lever it off these two edges here to get it freely away. Now let's go and have a look at the Bodometer app. So the first thing you need to do is head on over to either the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and download the Bodometer app. I'm using the Android version for this video. So when you first install the app and run it, you'll need to create an account um, with Bodometer and after that, you'll then see this screen. So this is the Bodometer setup screen that you see when you first install the app. So what we need to do first is set up the Bodometer. So we're going to do, we're going to press setup. If we just scan with the Bodometer turned off or powered down, it's not going to find it. Okay, so we need to turn the Bodometer on first. Okay, so we'll just hold the button for two seconds and the bodometer comes on. And then if we've already set it up, then we just press the scan button. We don't need to go into the um, app setup there unless we haven't set it up before or unless you've got a problem. The mobile phone, your whatever you're using, tablet, whatever, your app should find it anyway. Okay, and then we just choose our Bodometer app. Our bo then we just choose the Bodometer, should I say, and then we just connect to it and say yes, and then it will light up and it will show that it's connected. Okay, so I haven't put any data into this yet. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at some of the data and see what results it actually comes out with after shooting. So the first window on the top there is the number of shots you've shot in your last seven days and your level together with then the sessions that you've shot as well. Uh, a snapshot of your total shots, the number of sessions you've completed and your active shooting time in days, hours and minutes, okay, is on that screen. And also if you want to go back to the um, Bluetooth setup, you just go top right hand corner and go straight to that and that will check the connection. I move along to sessions. This is where you'll see your individual sessions and your current sessions. So your previous sessions and your current sessions and your XI spread. Okay. So if I go into click into that, I say click because I'm using it on a desktop, but you'd normally just touch into that and you can see your ranges, your high and low XI ranges, the level you're on and the duration that you've been shooting for. Okay. And they'll list underneath as well. We'll get into that more once we see some data coming in. Socially, this is the great thing about it. It's very social. You can see what other people are shooting with. You can see their levels. Um, you can see how many shots they've done, which will obviously motivate you to go out and say, oh, so-and-so shot more than me. I've got to go out, get out there and shoot some more arrows. So it obviously then puts you in a leaderboard, kind of makes it competitive, makes you want to shoot more. So I think it's great for that. And obviously you can manage your friends and add people into your leaderboard list. And then finally, there's settings, which we're, we're in device connection here. But if I come out, normally, if you go into settings, you'll see here the app version at the bottom and your firmware version. And then that was the screen we were in for devices to show that it was connected. Here, I can update my profile, the details that I entered when I first registered, when I first came in the app. Uh, manage friends, which is also available via the social bottom part here. So it's in two places. And finally, if you want to just sign out of the app. Okay. So that was a brief, very brief, should I say, overview of what the app looks like uh, while it's running and connected to the Bodometer. As I say, in the next video, we'll have a look at some data. So I hope that's given you a bit of an overview about the Bodometer, about how to use it on its own, how to position it somewhere on your bow 
and how to get the app sort of up and running. As I say, in the future videos, we'll have a look at some stats and some data. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. See you soon.